Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if they ever come back as this root. Root, root for the home team. Because if they don't care, it's a shame. Because it's one, two, three strikes you're out at the old ball game. What's up, guys? Welcome to Movie Emporium's flashback review of Major League. Um, this is a movie that I hold esteemly in my heart as one of the best comedies, one of the best movies, sports movies at least, of all time. Uh, it's a very funny movie. It deals with my favorite team trying to not go to the team that they lost to in the World Series. And it just has a great cast. You know, we have Tom Berenger, we have Charlie Sheen, we have uh, James Gammon, Wesley Snipes, Dennis Habert. Charlie Ross, Corbin Burnson, Rene Russo, M Margaret Witten, Bob Euchre. And it's just a fantastic movie. If you don't know what it is, it's about this lady who's played by Margaret Witten, who plays Rachel Phillips. Uh, she is the new owner of the Cleveland Indians. And she is greedy. She is, like, super rich, so she's uptight. And she wants to take the Cleveland Indians and move them to Florida. Which is kind of funny because the Cleveland Indians lost to the Florida Marlins in 1997. So it kind of makes sense and it's kind of funny. And the fact that the Marlins didn't exist at the time this movie came out is really, really funny. But she decides she's going to make this team the worst team in the league by bringing in a bunch of like overage, underdeveloped, really terrible players. So she gets people like Tom Berenger, who plays Jake Taylor, who's a like over the hill 40s, you know, baseball catcher. And then she gets like Charlie Sheen, who's a peanut. He's in, been in prison, but he's like a very unbalanced pitcher. Uh, Wesley Snipes just kind of comes in on his own as Willie Mays Hayes, and he's really funny in how he comes in because he has this um, a VW Bug with like a really expensive car logo on the front. And it's really funny how he comes in, and then, you know stuff like that. And then you have like Dennis Haber, who's playing uh, Pedro Serrano, and he comes in. And he's like. A really good hitter, but he does he's really bad at hitting and stuff like that. You know, we have um Corbin Burnson as Roger Dorn, and he is kind of uh, one of those guys that's made a lot of money, but he doesn't really care about his team and so on. It's so on and so forth. I mean, it's, there's so many good people in this movie, it's ridiculous. But anyway, she hires she gets all these people, and as we know about the underdog story, they suck at first and eventually they become good, and that's what's happening here. They're at first. Big spring training in the first few, probably halfway through the season, this team sucks. There's no way this team is going to win anything. And it just shows in each moment, you know, how the pitchers are pitching, how the catchers are catching, how the outfield is just missing stuff. There's a really funny scene where a ball gets hit and three outfielders just kind of run into each other and <laughs> fall over and stuff like that. And this movie is directed by David S. Ward, who wrote stuff like The Sting and Sleepless in Seattle. He also directed The uh, the Program. And there's just like, this is a movie that takes itself seriously, but has fun doing it. It has no problems with being funny. I think, like I said, Tom Berenger and Charlie Sheen are fantastic in this movie. My favorite person in this movie, outside of Bob Uecker, that's one of the players slash coaches, is James Gammon who is the gruff coach he used to be a, he was a car salesman and he is just amazing in this movie when roger dorn comes up to him saying i can't do this this and this and he shows him a contract james gammon's character lou brown he takes the the contract throws it on the ground pees on it it's really funny that's the kind of stuff he's doing in this movie he's just he's a lot of fun he's like that coach that really cares about his players really wants to do things for his players but he doesn't give it. He doesn't give a crap. He doesn't care if you like it or not. And another person, Wesley Snipes, is Willie Mays Hayes. I'm so sad that he didn't show back up in Major League Two. It went to another person. And he's just funny here. He's just so excited. But he's a he's a great runner. He's a great stealer. But he can't steal right. Like every time he steals, he gets to. He's not far enough on the base. He's not far enough. You know, so on and so forth. And it's just. How he's introduced to the story is just really fun and fantastic. And that's just this movie in a nutshell. Just these oddball characters that have to work together. And there's some really creative ways of doing that. But 
I also like this story because one, it deals with the Cleveland Indians, which is my favorite team. So I have a lot to kind of be favorited about, but it's just, I think it's just a funny movie in general. I think the premise is really unique and really creative. I think the fact that the characters are just like, since they're so oddball, they're having so much fun with the premise that they're given. And I think, like I said, you know, when you have David and Dennis Haber coming in as Pedro Serrano, and he has this, like, shrine to Joe Boo, which is really funny because Joe Boo's a big thing in my, with my friends because of the character. The fact that Charlie Ross, who's playing Eddie Harris, he has kind of, like, a, a rivalry with Pedro Serrano. And there's a really funny moment when he drinks pay, uh, Joe Boo's uh, drink or whatever, and he goes out and gets hit by a baseball bat, which, which is I think is pretty clever, but... And you cannot not talk about this movie without talking about Bob Euchre, who's playing Harry Doyle. Harry Doyle is the commentator for the Indians. He does all their games. He is the guy that you always, when you're watching a baseball game or a football game, you hear giving the play-by-plays and so on and so forth. He is so just despondent with this team that he is not. he doesn't care what he says. He doesn't care what he does. He's always drinking. He has his like, sidekick or uh, assistant next to him who's like, He's like the normal person because Bob Euchre just doesn't care. And it's just such a brilliant performance and a brilliant take on a commentator who probably loved his craft when he first started, but just hated it and continued to hate it and so on and so forth. So Bob Euchre is just amazing in this movie. He's one of probably the standout of this movie and it's just pretty awesome. But in the process, we also have Jake Taylor who is pining for his old love, who's played by Rene Russo, who plays Lynn Wells. And Lynn Wells is getting ready to be married to another person, kind of a jerk of a person. And she's also a librarian. She's very sweet. She's very humble. She doesn't have a lot of substance to her, but the fact that her and Jake Taylor's character really work well together makes her character kind of fun to watch. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of good moments, like the whole scene where you know, Rick Vaughn, Charlie Sheen's character, and Corbin Bernson's uh, Roger Dorn. They have their whole big spout, and some things happen near the end of the movie. But Corbin Bernson's character kind of learns to play with the other characters, and instead of, like, confronting the problem, he's like, you know, strike these people out. And it's just that kind of material. And how the story goes from the underdogs into the winners – how that plays out is really fun. To see Rachel Phelps just kind of start to just like go become baffled because she thought she had like the plan of the century. And here it is. Everything's backfiring in her face. And it's like the great moment in, you know, film in general when the bad guy or the antagonist just gets their due and their upcomings. And it's just that's what's go great about this movie. But like I said, the movie is rated R, so there's very mature themes. There's a lot of violent language. There's a lot of sexual content. And it does date itself. I mean, this, like I said, this movie came out in the eight, late 80s. So it still takes place in the old municipal stadium. And in 94, I think it was, or somewhere around there, it eventually went and they became to the Progressive Stadium, which is a new stadium, which is current now. But I just like the, I like the look and feel. It's a very old school feeling movie. The humor is very rich and funny, and it's just a beautiful wa- thing to watch. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen this movie, but it's just, it's a good sports movie. It's a good comedy in general. And the character said the characters are just bringing it, and they're all great, and everybody has their moment. So, so that's it. That's my take on Major League. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button at the top, and comment below and tell me what you think of this movie what your favorite sports movie is, or what's your favorite comedic sports movie. You know, I'd be interested to know. But otherwise, that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them, too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.